<laughs> so, gentlemen, until now, uh, what do you think? We have discussed in different practical scenarios, and you know, one picture I also shared. And through that, uh, we discussed some of the responsibilities of standby man. Anybody remembers what were those responsibilities before we discuss uh, what I was saying? Any one of you, please. Let's see if anybody have some information still in mind. What are the responsibilities of a standby man? That is our last topic of this training. So his responsibility is to watch out the man who is under the confined space. Okay. And, and to communicate with him. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Constant communication between him and between uh, yes. you know the person who is uh, working inside a confined space. Okay. Yes. And okay. if there is a change, and if there is something, uh, some unanticipated or uh, you know some unforeseen uh, situation happening inside, he should be the one to notice it initially, and he should be the one alarming everybody because uh, he has full uh, full access to the communication for the entire you know task or activity. Kind of a middleman, right? In both ways. Yes, like a middleman. Middle between the management, like CSC, yes, security staff. Yes, if, exactly. And if there is an emergency, he's the one who is going to be notifying everybody to you know, evacuate or whatever the standard procedure is. Excellent. 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 But anyway, let's see what Aramco exactly is saying. That the standby man must be capable to review the entry plan and permits. That he will make sure the permits are issued. And no one is like going without uh, following the entry plan and understand possible hazards. And what are the possible hazards? The safety hazards and health hazards or common workplace hazards. That's all like, uh, uh, and if we specifically talk about the confined space hazards, can you just add value if somebody can give some examples of hazards related to confined space? What, what can be the possible hazards, you know? Uh, possible gas leaks. I mean, sometimes you uh, the gases may still be there with in unpermissible limits. So mm -hmm. that could be a hazard. Or there could be some flammable gases. Or if there's some hot work done, there could be some sparks and something. I mean, these hazards always have a tendency of happening. So, okay. so uh, plenty of hazards like engulfment, poor lighting, slip slip and fall, like mechanical hazard, electrical hazard. You know. Exactly. Gravitational exactly. hazard, some sort of uh, fire and explosion hazard, and the toxic acid, like you mentioned, Marcella. So, plenty of hazards could be there which need to be evaluated, and that is a part of PTW, PTW system, you know, the hazard and asset checklist, joint cell inspection, or JSI, in other words, and JSA. Uh, and also, we sometimes in different brands, they have method statement before you, and actually, we in a Ramco case, like hazard identification plan. Uh, 15, 20 days before you need to submit, uh, before you arriving at the site for the project to be executed. So it's same way the ERP emergency response plan, you know, if that is not effective or not available, could also be a hazard or anything missing, uh, uh, you know, uh, anything missing and like untrained, uncertified workforces there, still you can consider it as a hazard. But specific to the confined space, of course, there are plenty according to the nature of and the design of the confined spaces. And that all possible hazards that standby man must be, not only the standby man, even everyone who is involved in this project must be capable to recognize the hazards proactively and the supporting the controls accordingly. Now, maintain the entry log, that is the third major responsibility of uh, uh, standby man, like who is going inside, what's the batch number, time in, time out, what exactly is going to do, and and if he's uh, uh, coming out and then going back again, again, you know, the time is being noted. So every second uh, person to person is uh, being logged into that uh, CSC, entry log sheet, we can call it. Monitor the activities inside and outside the confined space. No, the question is, outside is understand, understood, you know, like he's standing outside, he can observe external hazards, but how are you going to monitor inside activity? What mechanism he can use, actually? 
because they mention monitors activities inside and outside question arise how he can watch and monitor inside activity you can add value with your experience please so whatever is coming in your mind just please don't sleep okay <laughs> because thank you very much you know after duty i was attending training and online training mean you have to sit all the time you can't run here and there thank you very much for your great energy and passion the question is how he can monitor activities inside is not a law is not allowed to go inside right there are some sensors or some devices inside that could uh, record or monitor the you know some less toxic gas levels are let's say they start rising and there's a sensor inside that says oh the gas level is above that now so you got to evacuate so something like this i mean he has access to certain uh, i would mean, technology in order to you know uh, identify anything unforeseen inside the confined space so he doesn't have to initially go in but he can still monitor uh, what's going on inside uh, inside the csc so he can take the proper course of action later on so in fact the two way communication right talking to the yes, entrant and through technology through some rope system some verbal yes, communication sir. that everything is okay any problem just let me yes, know in advance excellent master yes sir okay exactly. maintain the two way communication Yep. So that is his next responsibility also maintain two way communication notify the person in the event of an emergency in the event on an emergency he is the one immediately responsible to inform everybody whoever is working inside not in some cases a ramco says the standby man can be used as a fire but in some cases okay can be used as a fire watch i don't know with the what logic but uh, if we have ordered that he shouldn't go inside then how he can perform as a fire watcher but since uh, ramco 85 is experienced so they have some technical reasons behind like a fire watcher is not that much uh, active with fire fire extinguisher maybe he can be the second supportive person but in some cases not all the time we can uh, because the fire watch is the mandatory ingredient you know especially for hot work process no there are some other responsibility does not leave the entry point never enters the confined space primary responsibility no other duties other than stand by man he has no other duties for that particular project and uh, one more is to order entrance to evacuate when an unsafe conditions develop or an entrant displays unusual behavior affects from its hazard exposure and most importantly if the standby man has leave the area and no relief is provided then all the entrants are fully empowered to come up and stop work activity evacuate the space so these are the responsibility the standby man have to fulfill now the entrant you know whoever is going inside as per the project nature they must also realize their responsibility so as an entrant their number one responsibility is he must be a trained gentleman like you know especially to perform activity in a confined space whatever the assigned task is there they must also review all the permit that they are well issued and all hazards analysis everything they can verify and the controls applicable controls reviews entry plan and most importantly check work site you know the work and the site preparation understood understand the possible potential hazards in the confined space so hazard recognition separate training can be done for all the individuals whoever is involved especially for confined space project we can give them a separate training for hazard analysis or hazard recognition and control you know so maybe third party certification or maybe your internal safety trainer he can give some training and you can issue your internal kind of a certificate or might be a tenant sheet would also be good that's all your choices but what i mean is uh, create an evidence that your all team members are fully trained and certified just try to create that evidence even if they are already knowledgeable 
just refresh their knowledge and create an evidence. And this is where what a RAMCO is uh, looking for to see that you guys are responsible, serious, and they can rely on you as a best contract commercial because uh, that is the challenge for a RAMCO. Instead of uh, always imposing and watching you 24 hours, they want contractors to be fully responsible and accept the ownership for the safety management system. That is the reason now RAMCO is shifting all the pressures in. 90% contractors, they are trying to make responsible to follow and ensure and sustain even the safety management system requirements. And 10% are RAMCO as a customer, to be very honest, they want uh, to make sure that still you are in line with their expectations. That's how RAMCO is changing their strategy. And nowadays, you will be uh, looking after a lot of like uh, safety requirements are coming from Aramco because they want you to be a front leader, you know, for uh, QHC, quality health, safety environment, even for CSR, for, for social responsibility. And then Aramco as a customer still can support you, like if you need policies, procedures, or some of this sort of uh, uh, system which Aramco have generated through AI, through uh, ERP, or different mechanism is there. So they can help you. And also RAM to have a lot of other divisions, like they have QID, they have, uh, you know, uh, what I mean is uh, this uh, EPD, environmental protection, they have LPD, loss prevention division. So all are here to support that actually. There's even FPD, fire protection division is also there. So 10%, this is the future of a RAM to act. Because what they believe is we are the customer, we are awarding the contract, we are the money payers, we are the salary payers, and still we have the 90% headache. That is why they are promoting, you know, this culture that the contractors have to be fully responsible. And uh, that is the reason a lot of contractors are being blacklisted also. If they are violating the Aramco safety requirements. And because sometimes we believe Aramco is not watching us. But trust me, their intelligence system is so strong. Even within your company, you have no idea who is reporting to Saudi Aramco or working on behalf of Saudi Aramco within your company. Just to know the facts, how things are moving, you know, directly within your company. And this is how, because they know, and if they are watching you for last six months, then a time will come, they'll not leave any chance for your company to get back uh, green signal. They'll simply blacklist and they'll not tell even uh, a detailed reasons. Simply, they will say, we have evaluated for the last six months, we are watching you, and we don't need any more service or business with your respective company. Same case with the respected professional here. With the respected professional, like if regular level one is there, regular level two or three, or scaffolding supervisor, or work permit receiver, or issuer, or CSE supervisor, or any gentleman, even we, the trainers, or you know, the safety managers, the supervisors, the safety officers, or engineers in different mechanisms. Command you if if they are a ramp to approve with an ID and later on they observe that you are not the right person for the right job, they will definitely uh, blacklist your ID and uh, it's so hard to get back to work within a ramp to network. So, this is how their system is working. That is why they want contractors to realize that your safety is your responsibility, why you want your customer to take 90% tension. And still Aramco is supporting, still they have open budget for QHSC. Still I noted they are doing a lot of uh, free sessions, you know, through exhibitions. I have attended a lot. Now, the entrant must also be trained in use of PP, some other responsibilities, and then we can wrap up this session. Never enters until safety requirements are in place and clearly understand work assignment. If it's a welder, painter, abrasive blaster, stand by who, whosoever, is going inside according to the project nature must be uh, understanding clearly what exactly is going to do and uh, no multiple responsibilities. If it's a welder, is a welder. You can't tell a welder you are the electrical engineer or you are a WPR and along with the WPR, you are the fire watcher. No, no, you are the fire watcher and you are the fire watcher and you are the firefighter for the same project. So these complications today or tomorrow will definitely be. Uh, you know, fire back to the company. That's why for one project number, like project number double nine, well, these are the designation, these are the uh, roles, you know, as per the RAMCO guidelines or as per the signed agreement 
for that particular project number 99 need to be followed. So guys, uh, I would request if you have leadership positions, uh, take that contract which you have signed with Saudi Aramco. That is the first document. Surely uh, you need to study and review and understand what you have signed and promised and agreed with Saudi Aramco. If your top management is reluctant to share because of confidentiality or whatever, or sensitivity, that's a different story, but you must try and ask, you know, that because that is the most uh, uh, master and important document uh, to understand what Aramco is uh, expecting you for project number 99, project number 100 or 101, or region-wise, area-wise, like if we have a project in USP or oil refineries or oil rig sites, situation will be different. If you are uh, having project in residential compounds, conditions could be a little bit different. But some of the general safety requirements for all, they are similar for all. So I hope it will help, inshallah. So he's responsible to maintain, as an entrant, to maintain two-way communication with the standby man and alert standby man and other entrants to exit when order to vacate is given, warning signs or symptoms of exposure develop. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, I tried my level best to discuss maximum important things. Practically rest all I will share the training material. And whenever you get time, just start learning. So learning is a continual journey. Okay? So I'll share with Mr. Bilal and might be he can further or whenever you need, he can share or might be he can uh, uh, arrange some refresh trainings also by using the same material. Okay. Thank you very much. So for your ID and certificate, you can coordinate with Mr. Mumta.